So at Slant3D, we end up producing a lot of products with PLA. So, but what we're gonna do with this video is we're gonna actually walk through the pros and cons of that material and the things to be aware of within production of what can be done and what can't be done, what increases cost and what decreases cost. So we're gonna cover that right now. So PLA is one of the most common materials that we actually work with at Slant3D. The reason for that is that many of our clients are already prototyping their products with their own 3D printer, which means that they're very often led towards PLA because it's a very simple material to work with with at home or prototyping machines. Um, but PLA has a few advantages and disadvantages, especially when moving it into production that we're going to try to discuss here as much as possible. First of all, PLA is a bioplastic. There are several different grades of it. It goes from a number called 4043, which is very brittle and is generally the low cost option of PLA, up to a number called 870, which is a very durable, kind of less brittle, more reliable, almost ABS replacement type plastic, but it is more expensive, so it is less scalable. So generally PLA is used because of how brittle it is to be cost effective. It is generally used for promotional products, certain types of toys, um, good quality surface finish consumer products, that kind of thing. But it is almost never used for engineering products or high reliability products. It's kind of a, a not a tchotchke material, but a, a consumer product brick block kind of a material. That being said, it can, depending on the design, it can be turned into anything. PLA does have a reasonable amount of flexibility, so you can use uh, designs like grip fins and that kind of thing within it that have just a little bit of flex to allow something to fit. Now, the tolerances of uh, PLA. Since it's FDM, there is generally fairly low pro uh, tolerances of about 0.2 millimeters. That is the general tolerance to play with with any sort of 3D printed part. But if you were able to design in a wider tolerance, that decreases the cost of parts long term because QC standards are lower and it's easier to produce lots of parts without having to check and have secondary processes to inspect them. So you always want to be looking at that. PLA has the largest color variation of almost any material. The only other alternative might be like PETG and ABS. But PLA, we are able to do custom Pantone matches of almost any color that you can imagine though those take a couple extra weeks for creation. And then PLA also is able to offer a fairly quick turnaround because it does not have as much setup cost. It is quicker to start up, it is quicker to set up. It's also very good for print on demand because it can produce one part out of the blue very reliably because it's a very stable material. Generally, PLA is the lowest cost material in our catalog, depending on the design, but it lends itself to being highly automated with auto ejection and it is just a low cost source of material. That may be changing in future, so check back with future updates to see if other materials have become less expensive. But in general, that's a good rule of thumb. Things to watch out for with PLA. Its strength is lower. Interlayer adhesion is not amazing compared to other materials. It is more brittle, so you do not want vertical surfaces that have layer lines going through them, pointing straight up in the air because they will snap off with a reasonably small amount of force. So those either need to be very reinforced or just try to avoid them if possible. The closer you can get to a sphere or a block is something that you wanna do. PLA uh, into scale generally kind of bottoms out fairly high. Certain other materials like PETG is actually cheaper at mass mass production if the part is right. Um, because the cost of raw materials is less even though PLA is easier to work with. So there's a trade off there depending on the design of the part itself. PLA has a very good surface finish in general. It's very consistent because it flows smoothly and does not require any sort of complexity in setup or settings. And it's also the most robust for adjusting to different types of geometries, just again, because it's a very robust material inside of the 3D printing process. So that makes PLA a fairly good general option for products with some sort of aesthetic leading component. Uh, lamps, consumer products, household items, certain types of toys. PLA is not able to stand up to the outdoors. It melts inside of a hot car. It will literally deform and soften. So it is not something for functional parts inside of a hot car in Arizona, um, but it can be used within a house, within a controlled environment. So hopefully that covers kind of the, the pitfalls and the general outline of PLA and where it can be used. If you have any other questions, comment down below and we'll try to create a video to cover some more of that stuff. And let us know if there's anything else that you'd like us to talk about. Have a great day, everybody.